Hey guys, welcome back to Farley Hill. My name is Matt. Today we have some cutting to do and luckily we're in the shade. Um, I gotta get this done today because tomorrow is a busy, busy day. So I've got something set up um, that we're gonna try today. Something I haven't done before. I mean, the idea is there. It's just, uh, I've never actually tried it. See how many logs I could actually cut doing this. Um, behind me, I have a run of four by fours set up. And if you, I don't know if you could tell by the video, but this is like a downhill slope. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run logs and put them over there so that because of the slant of the slope, the log is gonna be off the ground other than the end over here. Um, everything else should be off the ground. And I'm just gonna uh, line up log after log after log after log. And the idea is two people can cut on the same row at the same time, one from this side and one from that side. You cut it, roll the log back, and then just meet in the middle. Um, and then after that, I'll grab my tractor with a grapple and be able to pick up the rounds three at a time and take them over to the splitter. I'm gonna grab these logs first because they're the furthest down. I'm gonna grab them, stack them right here along the side. And then I will grab these logs that are over here, bring them over there and stack as many as I can. And then if I have enough room, I'll start pulling from that pile over there. This is the idea guys. Um, in my head it went a little bit better than this, but no big deal. I mean, some of my spacing's off, but when I'm cutting, I could just move it beforehand um, and fix the spacing. Also, I have logs with crooked pieces all over. Um, so that doesn't help, but yes, we are, this is, I think this is looking good. Um, the point of the 4x4s was because this is a slope and I was hoping the 4x4 would even out the log as well as get it off the ground. Some logs it did work for that, other logs didn't, so that's kind of a hit or miss. So my dad is actually going to help me today. We are going to be using the 462, still 462 carbureted, and the still 400C. I do my marking with the mini chainsaw with the AccuMark.
So I got a little bit of footage for you guys for uh, when me and my dad were cutting. Honestly, we were moving so fast, it wasn't worth the time to uh, keep up with the uh, GoPro. So there's a couple things we learned uh, from this routine and it worked great. Uh, we just kind of had to find our groove. So we started off as both cutting from one end to the other and then we realized how fast we were going through the wood. So pretty much from then on, I had to either stay on the tractor or I was getting saws ready for my dad because he was the one cutting, he cut the whole time. It was so hot out yesterday that actually my dad was cutting and ran the 400 out of gas and we couldn't get it back started. It was just that hot. Um, that's one thing to keep in mind, guys. I don't know uh, if it's because of the 400C with the Mtronics or not, but my 462 definitely got hot, probably hotter than that 400. And there was a couple times that like it wanted to cut off, but it always started back up. I don't know if it's the Mtronics in it or whatever that stopped it from being able to restart. Um, later in the day, I was able to start it after it cooled down, um, but the 462 ran flawlessly. Uh, it got super hot too, where it was wanting to cut off on us as well. I mean, it was just a 98 degree day, and uh, running those saws just constantly like that is uh, definitely hard on them, but hey, that's why we got commercial saws, right? So our routine was what I would do once, I, once we got this set up, right? We got the log set up like y'all saw. I was cutting from this end, he was cutting from the other end, and then we kind of realized how fast he was going through the wood. So I jumped on the tractor and started moving the pieces he cut. Well, what we found out is if we start down here or he starts down here, cuts and moves down, by the time he cuts and starts moving down, I'll move these logs out of the way and put them in a pile, which I'll show you the pile. And then once he gets halfway, he'll go back on the back side over here, start cutting and moving this way. What that allowed me to do is get all these rounds out of the way, bring in new logs, and then I have a, a pathway that goes around this way. I was able to bring the tractor around here, pick up these uh, rounds right here, move them, and then grab more logs from over there. So we were just alternating from pile to pile. We were pulling from this pile over here and the pile back there. So it actually worked out really great. I think I definitely have a new cutting process if I have someone to help me. It's all about having that second person. It's just crazy how fast it moves along. But uh, yeah, so we learned a lot and uh, it worked out great. Sorry I couldn't get more footage, guys. I feel like every time I moved the camera, I was in the way with the tractor or my dad had to move or what, what have you. But uh, yeah, it worked out really great. Let me show you the pile of rounds we cut. So this is a lot of rounds, guys. I wanna say we went through probably 25 logs. They were all different sizes. Most of them are big. But this was all done yesterday, probably in three hours. I would say there's probably four cord of wood here. I mean, it's a lot. It's stacked probably six foot. And it's a lot, a lot of wood. So, and this is mostly oak. So we got a lot of wood cut up, which is awesome because cutting is my slowest process. Um, and this helps me tremendously. Thank you, dad, for helping me with this. Cause like I said, I couldn't do it without two people. Um, you can cut wood so fast that the person on the tractor stays on the tractor the whole time, just moving logs, moving rounds and all that good stuff. So we're definitely going to get ahead of this uh, core of the week. Right now I am one cord up. I actually did my cord yesterday morning which I'll show you when we walk over to the uh, other wood yard. We're over here in the stacking wood yard and I'll show you where I dump two dumps right here and then two dumps in these totes right here. Those totes were empty. So there's my cord for this week. So we are still one cord ahead. It is July 4th week, um, Friday, which was yesterday, or actually the day before yesterday. I had a really good day of sales. Um, I sold all of my regular bundles but four. So I thought this would be the perfect week to bring in bundles and change the price. It is now what it's gonna look like at the rest I stand. We got the new sign up there. Seven dollar bundles were three for 20. I can actually get 18 bags out here. I could put some up in the top right there, but I'm gonna hold off on that and just, uh, cause I really, I don't wanna put bags back there and someone start yanking in and pulling my sign down. The sign's got two screws in it, so it's not gonna pull out easy, but you know, people can break it if you allow them to. 
So uh, that is a display I think that looks great. It's definitely an eye catcher from the road. Since it is July 4th week, we gotta fill this up. So let's get the tractor and a tote and start filling these babies up. All right, so we're gonna scoop up this uh, IBC tote in front of me. It's all poplar. This is what I put at my rose house stand during the summer. It's the lightest, driest stuff I have. I'm gonna put you guys on time lapse and let's we'll fill these babies up. We got it all filled up here. I'll take that 40 rack and the mobile stand down to the wood yard and I'll fill them up down there. I'm gonna finish up the uh, road size stand, but I'm not gonna video it because y'all know it's just stacking. I got the uh, roadside stand on wheels hooked up the tractor this is how i do it i just back up to the pile fill it up and then take it back up there with the tractor i hope everybody has a safe and happy uh july 4th i know that's coming up this week thanks for watching guys we'll see you next time